Well, I'm in a spectacular place today, and as usual, I overslept a little bit, so it's probably time to get the day started. So this is where I parked last night. Pretty nice, isn't it? And it gets better because it's a little trail right down at the end of this main street. Let's go walk down there and we'll talk. So this is the Mendocino Headlands State Park and it is just beside the little town of Mendocino, the Northern California coast. So it's a little odd how I wound up here in Mendocino. Uh, a couple of days ago, I was on the opposite side of the state of California. I was up in the foothills of the Tahoe National Forest, kind of um, north a bit of Sacramento. So completely opposite side of the state. And I was having some issues. Um, it got really hot, as it does in that area. And I was not feeling well. Uh, to start uh, and then I started to have a little battery issue and I have a fairly new lithium battery and so uh, it was a little cause of concern for me and the one thing I knew uh, was that I just couldn't spend too much time in heat and all the locals there uh, were telling me it was going to be 100 degrees in a day or two and I figured that was just too much for me. I knew it was going to be too much for my battery since I was having the battery trouble. So I did what I thought was the smartest thing, jumped on Route 20 and just went straight west until I got to the coast. And my idea was to go to Fort Bragg and for some reason got to Fort Bragg and then I just kept going, uh, came down south just a few miles here to Mendocino. And I don't know why, but I am really happy that I did. Now, there are bunches of hiking trails through this little state preserve, and everywhere is a big, huge cliff with dramatic views down to the ocean. It's a nice little place to walk first thing in the morning. So by me moving to this side of the state, over near the ocean, I've dropped about 50 degrees in temperature, which means that uh, I think my battery is okay, and I am certainly feeling much better because I was really not feeling good. Uh, partly because I was just getting overheated, and partly because it was so hot, I just didn't have much of an appetite, so I wasn't eating much. I actually lost a few pounds over the last week uh, just because I was cooking breakfast in the morning, and that was pretty much it. I just didn't want to turn the stove back on. I uh, haven't been drinking much coffee either, so saving money on food and coffee, but uh, not, not really liking the results of that. So this is a much better place to be. So while I am always drawn to the ocean, there's a really cool place to hang out for the day, and it's where I spent the day yesterday. It's right down, just kind of under that bridge at the center of the frame. So I think we'll move down over there, and also, I need to finish my coffee, and I should probably get a little breakfast going too, shouldn't I? So one thing I've noticed in my short time here in Mendocino is this is a very busy town on the weekends and it's a very sleepy, quiet town during the week. So if you do plan to come here, I do suggest coming here during a weekday and not a weekend. But any time is good here, I think. There's a really relaxed vibe going on here, and it's a little unusual to me. I, I didn't expect it to be such a relaxed and inviting uh, area as it is. So a very welcome place to be. 
in a number of ways for me right now. So yesterday when I came up here, I parked over in the first set of parking that I noticed, which is right over there. It's perfectly nice, uh, close to getting out toward the ocean. And there's a little honey bucket over there if you need that and all. And I was happy with that spot. But then when I went for a little hike later in the day, I realized that there's a lot more parking. If I just had traveled a little farther up the road here, so there's a big, huge area, parking area here, and off in the distance there's a boat launching area, and then there's actually some nicer restrooms farther off uh, in the distance there. So today I'm just going to split the difference and park right in between because I'm planning on doing what I did yesterday and enjoying a little bit of all of this. Well, my first instinct is just to run right out toward the ocean and uh, enjoy that a little bit. But I'd better make some breakfast before I do that because yesterday I wandered out there and uh, stayed out there much too long. So um, better take care of needs first. So I think I'm just gonna do something quick and easy here. Got some eggs I'll make up and I also bought some yogurt and I've got a little bit of that left. I was buying anything that didn't require any cooking, so that's why I bought this, but I think I opened this up a few days ago, so I'm gonna finish this off too. Not that those go all that great together, yogurt and eggs, uh, maybe they do. Um, I'll eat them separately, I'm not gonna cook the yogurt, but uh, yeah, that'll give me a little fuel so that I can run around and enjoy the day. Because it's going to be nice here, especially because it looks like there's going to be a lot less people here. It was really crowded here yesterday. So I've got a nice simple breakfast here this morning before I head out and enjoy the area. Um, and I was just thinking uh, that for anybody that's following along, uh, I should probably address the battery issue a little bit because I'm sure I'm going to have questions. And I don't want to bore everybody about talking about it. Um, one, because uh, not everybody's interested. And two, um, I'm not done testing yet. I still have some testing to do, but that was part of the reason I came here to a cooler area was that I had the suspicion that my my fridge was pulling too much power, more power than what I was bringing in. So I figured as long as I got to a cooler area, I would have time to uh, just do a little research and, and figure out what the actual problem is. So I, I'm not done with the testing yet, but so far, what I've figured out is kind of a twofold problem. Uh, one, I definitely was using more power than I was pulling in. Uh, and two, I, th I believe that I have a little issue with my charge controller. So the charge controller is going to have to get swapped out at some point. So the good news is this charge controller works most of the time. And I just am going to need to keep an eye on it. So not a big problem as long as I'm not in a really hot area. And as far as the fridge goes, um, there's a really easy solution to fixing the issue of using more power than I'm bringing in. I know I've had a lot of suggestions about putting in a DC to DC charger and you know hooking up to my alternator and adding more solar and all of that's great, right? I mean, that's all great, but it's all a lot of money. Uh, but there's a really easy way to cut down on my power without having to spend hundreds of dollars uh, doing all the stuff that people are telling me that I should be doing. I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm just saying that uh, I don't really have hundreds of dollars 
to invest in my system. But what I can do uh, is I can turn my freezer off and just use the fridge as a fridge and not as a fridge and freezer combination. And the only reason I didn't do that a couple of days ago, a few days ago, uh, is that I've bought a bunch of really expensive ground beef. And just when I've seen it on sale, some of the sales have been really good. Uh, so when I see it on sale, I'll just buy it, throw it in the fridge, and I've just really packed the fridge up full of ground beef and frozen vegetables. And so if I had less of that, I would have just turned the fridge into just a straight fridge and not a combination fridge and freezer. And that would have solved my issue. Um, that way I would have leveled out my power use. I would have been back to bringing in more power than what I'm using and no more problem. Uh, but because I had so much in the freezer, there was no way I was going to be able to eat that uh, meat as it thawed. Um, I, you know, I could have eaten some of it, but there was, I just have too much that uh, it would have thawed and probably gone bad by the time I've got, got to it. So the, the best alternative, I think, and the thing that I've been trying to do is just to stay in cooler areas. and. I've been wanting to be at the coast. I always want to be at the coast, but I've been staying away from here just because it is a little more expensive to drive around the area. We don't need to go into all that anymore. We all know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I was just staying away just because it was going to be cheaper to be in a different area. But as it turns out, I think it's actually cheaper for me to be in a cooler area no matter what. So I'm going to be here for a little bit, uh, you know, cooler areas, I'm saying. Um, I don't know how long I'll be in Mendocino. I really like it here, and it's funny, the first evening I got here, after a huge long drive, not a terribly easy drive either, uh, Route 20 gets pretty twisty and very steep drop-offs, and I was, uh, yeah, I was glad to be done with the driving when I finally got here. I didn't realize Route 20 was quite so twisty. I didn't really look into anything specifically. I just knew I needed to get to a cooler area. And this was it, right? This was an easy thing to do. Just get on Route 20 and head west. I didn't have to think much. I just took one, one freeway, one road, I guess. Oh, I was going to say when I first got into town here the first evening, I walked out to that spot that we were at this morning and I just kept thinking to myself, why? Why do I ever leave the coast? I, I just, I'm just so happy when I'm at the coast. There's a lot of other places I've been over the last few months that have just been really nice places to be and that I felt like I was at, I was in Truckee for a week and a half or so, and I felt kind of at home there. And that's an unusual thing for me to say. I'm usually not at home anywhere, but I was feeling kind of at home in Truckee. And I wouldn't say I'm feeling at home here in Mendocino necessarily, but I am just enjoying being here. Just the energy of being near the ocean is such a great place for me to be and uh, gives me time to figure out my issues with the power it's cool I'm feeling better I mean it's just it's just the place for me to be so here I am that was a long-winded uh, <laughs> little explanation of why I'm here but I'm happy to be here and I should probably eat my breakfast <laughs> all right with breakfast done before we take a walk just going to put my portable solar panel up. I've got one of these uh, foldable solar panels from Rockpels, and right now it's coming in handy because I can't really uh, charge my portable power packs very easily because I'm not driving much. So this is coming in handy to keep those portable packs charged up. And all I'm going to do is just put it on the top of the van, kind of like my uh, regular fix panel is stick it up on top of the van. I'll run the power cord through the door and get my little packs charged up.
I know it's a mess back here, but uh, you try living out of a minivan. <laughs> That's bringing it a little bit. A little dark today, but maybe the sun will pop out a little bit later. I need to get this charged so I can keep my uh, phone charged and my iPad charged. Okay, I think that's going to work just fine. I'm really glad I have that extra panel, or I'd probably be in a little bit of trouble because um, I really don't want to do a lot of driving to charge, so this is great that I've got solar that will keep me powered. That's my big thing. I want to power all of my stuff with solar, not with my engine, just in case I'm in a situation in time like I'm in now where I just don't want to do a lot of driving. So. This is great. Uh, we'll leave that be and let's go take a walk down to the ocean. Um, I don't think I'm going to need the down coat though. Well, down jacket. So I think I'm going to switch to my sweater and there's a really cool spot I found yesterday. So let's go down and see if uh, we can have it all to ourselves since there's not a lot of people out here today. I decided to grab a couple of my magnets and just kind of tie the solar panel down to the van. I've got uh, four of these. I bought them at Harbor Freight. Uh, when they're on sale, they're a pretty decent price. So they work pretty well, especially since I've got grommets on this Rock Pels panel. Uh, sometimes I'll hang it on the side of the van and sometimes I'll just use it just like this just to uh, Make sure if the breeze picks up, I don't come back and find the panel is on the ground and not actually pulling in any power. So I feel a little bit better about that. Now let's, uh, let's go take a walk. So this is the big river and it empties right out to the Pacific Ocean. The color of the water is really amazing and hopefully the Sky will change a little bit. Sun maybe will come out and give us a little better look at the water later today. We're here all day, so I'm sure we'll get a good look at it. Yeah, and this is really pretty down here. Uh, like I said, yesterday was really busy. This was just busy full of people enjoying the beach and the water. Uh, lots of kayakers, lots of swimmers out here. There's actually a place to rent boats and kayaks kind of straight ahead there if you are so inclined, but you know me, I don't want to be in a boat. I want to be walking. Yeah, I'm loving the water here, but I am always drawn to the ocean, so let's walk over in that direction. And there was a little cave I found yesterday that I'm hoping we'll have all to ourselves today. Let's go check it out. This is a little cave I found yesterday. So cool because there's a little log in there that you can sit, just watch the ocean. I just love this. There's water dripping off the cave walls here and then you get the sound of the ocean too. This is just so cool. This was really cool. Glad I had this little cave all to myself for all this time. But I didn't bring any water with me or coffee. I really kind of need to drink some water and I want some coffee. So back to the van. The 
There's a person out there surfing. That's hardcore. That that water is cold. Not for me. Well, good news. The solar panel is still here. I was a little worried the wind was going to take it, even though I've got a couple of magnets on it. They're not really holding it in place. They're just kind of pinning it a little bit. So I'm happy to see that's still there. And there are a few more people out here now than there were this morning. It took a little while for it to fill up. It's still uh, not nearly as packed as it was over the weekend. All right, coffee time. So I, I bought this little electric tea kettle to use from time to time to save on propane, but I haven't been able to use it for well, over a week now because just as uh, not been ideal conditions for it. But hopefully I can get back to using it because it's actually been really helpful. Um, I, you know, it's nice to be able to heat up water using solar power, but like I said, just the, I, the conditions are not ideal right now for it. So thankfully I've got choices and I can use my propane. And then I guess I really need to look at this. This is charged up. This is not quite charged up. The trouble with um, having a cloudy day is my foldable panel doesn't pull in nearly as much power as my glass panel. So it's taken a little while to get these charged up. So I'm glad that I put the panel up this morning. It's almost charged. It's got 93%. Uh, so pretty close, but um, as long as I'm sitting and not moving, need to get that panel up and uh, get these things charged, especially if it's going to be overcast like it is now. Okay, now that I've got the important stuff done, just a little taste of this first. I generally like to let my coffee cool down for just a couple minutes, but... I haven't been drinking too much coffee over the last couple weeks, so um, yeah, it's hard to just let it set. Boy, this is good. Very good. Okay, so <laughs> now that I've got the important stuff done, I should probably eat a little something. And last night I made a big pot of chili, and I used some of my venison that I bought on sale a few weeks back from the freezer. And I normally only use a half of a pack, so half of a pound. But this one I made with a full pound. And man, it's, uh, it's decadent. I, uh, I'm tempted to just keep doing that. But I usually like more vegetables and a little less meat. But this was uh, pretty nice having it uh, be extra meaty, I have to say. <laughs> Uh, this is really good, but um, I got a, a little bit too spicy. Uh, lately I've been making chili with some Wajillo salsa as the chili base for my chili uh, that I buy from Trader Joe's. But since I haven't been around Trader Joe's much at all, um, I ran out of that Wajillo salsa. So I got digging around in my little pantry and I found I had some of this organic chipotle habanero sauce, you know, and I figured like, oh, I'll, I'll try it as a chili base because it's spicy, right? So it's got to be fine uh, for that. I, I had bought this on sale quite a while ago and I didn't like it. And so I just kind of shoved it down in my pantry. But being that I needed something, I pulled it out and tried it. And it's good, like it does the job. But I have to be careful because if I add a little bit too much this is some spicy stuff. So I've got a little spicy chili, which is okay. Um, you know, it's good for you, I guess. But I just got to remember next time, not quite so much chili. Okay, I'm all fueled up and I did not finish all of my coffee, but that's okay, I guess. I can leave that and maybe enjoy that when I get back 
to the van, but just thought I would take you up to the other side of this area, which is why I wanted to park right here in the middle, so that uh, I could enjoy everything that's going on here. So we went out to the ocean before, and then directly behind the van here, in front of me, uh, here we go, is the river. This is Big River. And then there's a hiking trail, hiking and biking trail, that uh, goes right up here. So we can go quite a ways if we want to. And I thought I'd do that because I went a little ways yesterday, but didn't go too far. So let's uh, take a little walk up the road. So this is a little boat ramp area of sorts. If you've got a boat or a canoe or a kayak or something, you can easily get it in the water here. Uh, nice little thing, I guess. Uh, there's a big little swimming beach over there and there are some pit toilets here and just helpful little reminder if you do come to this area uh, definitely come down here and use the pit toilets versus the honey bucket at the other end of the parking lot I'm not gonna say anymore I'm just gonna leave that for you if you do happen to uh, come down here walked up here yesterday, it was really just to escape the crowds of people back on the other side of the parking lot. There was hardly anybody hiking out here. A uh, few mountain bikers, uh, they don't allow e-bikes on this trail here past the little uh, gate there, so um, that was nice. At least they weren't like racing by. It was just people taking a nice little gentle stroll on their bikes. And then, like I said, a few hikers, but very few people. It seemed like everybody stayed over on the other side, and that was fine with me. Um, you know, I uh, like people and all, but uh, sometimes you just want to enjoy a little peace and quiet. Now, the only real drawback I've seen with this trail is that it's pretty heavily lined with trees, so you do uh, miss a little bit of the views of the river by taking the trail. I guess that's one of the benefits of being on a boat or a canoe or something down there, is you can uh, get to uh, have unobstructed views of the river, but this is a nice little trail to be on. There are just hundreds of birds around here and uh, at least there were yesterday so um, it's a nice little hiking trail I think and this goes for a ways. Whenever there's water around I'm always usually just kind of hyper focused on the water but every now and then I just take a look around and I'm just taking a look up the cliff here. There's just so much to take in around here just so, so much. Well, I think this is as far as I made it yesterday. There's this little bridge over a little culvert here, and I got uh, wore out yesterday because what I did wrong yesterday was I didn't stop for lunch before I walked back up here. So even though it's not very far, I got to this point and I was just beat. I also forgot to bring water, which um, is always a little tricky because I don't really necessarily want to take my backpack 
and I don't really like holding on to my water bottle, so usually I just try to hike close to the van and then get back to the van really quickly if I need some water, but I, uh, I was fueling it yesterday. <laughs> By the time I got back to the van, I was uh, done doing any walking or hiking. Although I don't guess this is hiking, is it? This is just a nice, easy, gentle walk. I am interested to see if I missed anything spectacular up ahead. Of course, I probably did because everything up here is spectacular. Hmm, does this mean I have walked a mile? Is that what that means? Mile one? I think so. I haven't walked too far. Look at this. A little creek. Well, this is probably as good a spot as any to turn around. I know it's only a mile, but um, I'm not quite into uh, shape as I should be, so I try to keep my walks short. And I was getting a little warm, so I had to do the old uh, preppy uh, thing with my sweater. I just tied it around my waist. I feel silly. <laughs> anyway, back to the van. I do have a half a cup of coffee waiting for me. So, yeah, back to the van. Well, I've been here at the coast for two nights now, and I have been waking up chilly uh, since I've been here. Um, I sleep cold, usually, so as soon as I stop moving around, I'm just an icebox. So I think uh, I'm gonna have to change around my bedding a little bit. I need to get my duvet, my down duvet, up out from under my bed and on top so that I'm not waking up chilly. Uh, what a problem to have, right? In June, almost July. Uh, but anyway, I got to do that. I keep putting it away and then taking it back out because I keep going from warm areas to cool areas. So uh, not a big problem, but I got to do that now. And uh, oh, I was going to say the uh, I was checking the forecast and the forecast for the next at least week that I can see. It's going to be pretty much the same every day. So 60 uh, during the day and like 48 at night, at least for the next week. So uh, if I do stay around here, which hopefully I can, uh, I'm definitely going to need that down duvet out. Because 48, I know it's not cold, but like I said, as soon as I stop moving around, I'm just an ice box, so I uh, I gotta do the bit of work to get that duvet out, which I never enjoy making my bed, but it involves totally taking my bed apart and then putting it back together again. So I gotta do that now. Oh, I have coffee waiting for me, don't I? Where is it? Oh yeah. Let's see if it's still warm. Hmm. Uh, just barely warm, but still warm. <laughs> All right, got the bed put back together. That went swimmingly, and I'm sure I will be much more comfortable. I was thinking that uh, this is one of the best decisions that I've ever had, is buying a down duvet and I really debated I was, I was just going back and forth for a few weeks whether I should buy this thing or not and I, I used to work right near uh, a Ikea in Seattle and so there were maybe three or four nights that I would go up to, to Ikea after work and just look at them and think like should I buy one should I not and then I finally bought one and ever since then I realized that this is just such a great idea. These things are so comfortable. Um, and I know people have little issues with down 
So they're, it's not going to be for everybody. You know, if you're vegan, you're not going to buy a down duvet. I get that. But um, it's just been such a comfortable and just like so well used item that I'm just so happy that I bought it all those years ago. And I, I was going back and forth from using a, uh, you know, just blankets, many blankets. And uh, I would also go with a sleeping bag of some sort. And I still have a really heavy sleeping bag. And I keep it just because, you know, if I need it in the future, uh, I have it. Uh, or like I'm using it now, it's basically just extra mattress for me. It just sits under my uh, mattress pad here and you know it just provides a little extra cushioning but the difference between putting yourself into a sleeping bag and having just a duvet over you is just so much better and then having a down duvet is just even better and like I I just really like this thing so I complain a little bit about having to do the shuffle with it putting it away under my bed and then getting it back out again but it's totally worth it it's just totally worth it well now that I've got my little job taken care of I think I want to go back out to the ocean and just uh, stare at the waves a little bit I'm just so happy to be back here at the coast I just didn't expect to be back here this year at all so since I'm here I think I'm gonna take advantage of uh, the fact that I am so close I'm just going to go back and uh, spend a little time over at the water. So I've been wondering about something since I've gotten here. So over here we've got the ocean, and then over here we've got the river. At what point is it freshwater and seawater? So like at what point is it salty and freshwater? I really kind of wonder because it's, it's obviously flowing out, the river's flowing out into the ocean, but also the tide would push water up the river a little bit, right? So there'd be some mixing. I don't know, maybe that's a silly question, but I just kind of wonder at what point is it seawater and freshwater? Mm. I just thought of something. I must really be happy to be here at the coast because I have not thought about taking a nap all day today. I've just been energized to be out and about moving around and enjoying the scenery. <laughs> it's an unusual day. Well, I messed up. I wasn't watching the water and I got my feet wet and my pants a little bit too. Of course my socks are soaked, but good thing I've got uh, lots of clean socks and I do have some backup shoes. So I'm going to swap these out now. <laughs> Oops. Well this has been a fantastic day. Uh, just a fantastic day, and it's actually 7 o'clock now. Probably doesn't look like it because uh, we're here just past the summer equinox, so these days are long, which I am really loving. I think it's staying light until 9 or 9.30 here, so just fantastic to have that much daylight. But I've got to go find a place to park for the night and make some dinner and edit this video. This is probably going to be a very long video to edit. I've got lots and lots of footage to go through and weed down uh, the good stuff and bad stuff as always, but um, I need to do that. Uh, this parking lot is open between 6 and 10 p.m. and there is no overnight camping allowed here, but of course I can 
park in town like I have the last couple of nights. So that's what I'm going to do, just take off from here. Even though I could stay here another few hours, uh, probably just need to get a spot and get to work. So I'm going to end it here, and uh, as always, hey, thanks for watching, everybody. I really appreciate it.